Yeah. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Alicia Lott. This channel is for those of you who want to have a journaling routine that is messy, minimalist, and low budget. And for those of you who want to use journaling for mental health and the growth and the feelings and stuff. The second half of the video is going to be me setting up my weekly spread in my bullet journal. But the first half of the video, I wanted to go into our feelings and stuff. So our question of the week is, what would I write to my future self? I did a video a few weeks ago in which I got my new journal that I'm using now and I said goodbye to the old journal. So when I say goodbye to an old journal, it's a whole process. And on the last page of each journal, although I haven't done it yet for this journal, uh, I write myself a little letter, just, you know, not like a little encouraging letter, just saying, hey, I'm proud of you and uh, just keep going forward and stuff like that. Something really positive and uplifting to kind of give me good vibes going into the new journal. Two weeks ago, I did a video entitled, How Can You Journal Like an Olympian? And this weekend is the closing ceremonies of the Olympics. And why am I so obsessed with the Olympics? I promise you I'm not. I really don't, I really don't care about sports that much. Um, but I like the idea of the Olympics because it's a good time marker. It's, it's a big event. It's a big global event that millions and millions of people are watching. It's just something to mark every four years. And so that's what I like about it. It's like, huh, I can, I can think about what, where I was for the last Olympics, where I was four years ago. And you know, you can kind of think ahead and think about where you will be four years from now. So I think it's, it's just a nice little bookmark in life. Where will you be four years from now? What will you be doing? What will you look like? Where will you be living? Will you be happy? You know, do you ever think about those things when the Olympics come? <laughs> Am I the only one who thinks that when the Olympics is the, the year of the Olympics or the year of maybe a presidential election or something like that, that comes not every year, but maybe every four or five years. And I thought about it and I said, hmm, I should write a letter to myself, future Alicia. It's a great way to reflect on how far you've come. And then for your present self, it's, I, I look at it as kind of a motivational tool. It kind of pushes you to be the person that you want to be by the time you open the letter. If you're going through kind of a tougher time, if you're facing some difficulty in your life, maybe sitting down and saying to yourself, you know, life is not so great right now. Life sucks. I'm going to write about it. I'm going to tell you future self how it is. And then when you read it, you'll just laugh and laugh or maybe not. <laughs> maybe you'll cry. Who knows? But hopefully things will be better by the time you read the letter. Better letter. I didn't mean to rhyme there. I'm sorry. If past Alicia had been thinking about future Alicia maybe a week or so ago, she would have purchased some nice stationery in order to do this letter. Okay, so how do you write a letter to yourself? First, you want to take some time to think about where you currently are in life, and that way you can give future self a good snapshot of where you are, what your daily routine is like, uh, where you, I keep saying where you live. I, I move around a lot. So yes, four years from now, I may not be living here. I, I know I won't be living in this apartment, but Cincinnati, who knows? We don't know. So yeah, give your future self that snapshot. What types of food do you eat? Who are you dating right now? What music are you listening to? Also, it might be nice to talk about your current goals, anything like that that you can share with a future person who might have forgotten. After you take a deep dive into the present, think about the time frame in which you plan to open the letter. I don't know, I, I just feel like you're not gonna change enough for the letter to really be worth it if you only make it like a month from now or a couple weeks from now. I don't know. Also, in what areas do you hope to grow? In what areas do you hope that maybe emotionally, spiritually, you will be a better person? Hopefully you'll be a nicer person, a kinder person, a more grateful person. <laughs> We don't know. I would encourage you to not make the letter too negative, 
but definitely I think it would be valuable to speak about some of the challenges that you might be facing in your life. Um, maybe something with your family or maybe something with your health, something with that job that you don't like, <laughs> something like that that is really bugging you, something that you're really worried about that you can mention. And then when you read the letter finally, hopefully that will have passed and you'll be able to look back on that. You know, maybe speak about your relationships, talk about who are some of the most, most important people in your life right now. Will they still be as important? four years from now will they still be in your life four years from now whenever whatever your time frame is and finally i think it would be quite lovely if you ended the letter on a positive note i do think that's important kind of bookends kind of start positive and positive <laughs> tell yourself something encouraging or hopeful um maybe something that expresses your pride for having stuck through that challenging situation for so long or for having worked so hard or for having been nice and kind all of that time <laughs> to people because i know sometimes it's not always easy um so yes yeah, something that kind of spurs the future self forward and you know leaves them feeling good after having read the letter so yeah what is something that you think you will be proud of yourself for during that time frame so here we are i feel overall it was a good week um but you guys Last Sunday, I was feeling very optimistic about what I can do in 10 minutes. I made up this whole challenge for myself. During my work day, some, somewhere, I was going to take these little creative breaks of 10 minutes. And I really like envision myself whipping out all of my watercolor brushes and paint and everything which were at that time scattered all over my room so yes i was going to gather all of these materials and somehow just create this masterpiece within 10 minutes during my work day <laughs> oh. oh alicia alicia of august 4th so young so beautiful so naive because the goal of last week's video was really to unplug oneself from devices and from technology and be free of just the internet. And then I kind of tacked on the creative breaks as well. So I think I was kind of putting the cart before the horse when I decided on this little challenge for myself. Um, and just, I think I need to focus more on detoxing, unplugging from technology a little bit more, not be scrolling on my phone all the time, not be Googling any random thing that comes into my head in that exact moment oh do i really need to know how tall steph curry is or do i need to know how much money this celebrity makes or whatever yeah just just silly stuff that i will just stop everything and pull out my phone and look at so i need to stop doing that so this week I do feel it was productive because what I did was instead focus on putting a lot of blockers on my computer and on my phone so that I can't just be at any random moment going and Googling something or going to this or that website or going to this app and scrolling and scrolling. So I, I deleted all social media from my phone except for <laughs> Facebook Messenger, not Facebook, but Facebook Messenger. That's the only like social media thing that's on my phone anymore. That is what I've been working on this week and so in that regard i do feel that the unplugging was successful but no i i didn't really do a creative break uh except for my journal i did yes i have um partially decorated the front and back covers of my journal so just to give me some color i do like color in the front and back even though i'm not you know overall i'm minimalist but i do like to see something bright and colorful when i open the journal I came across a very tiny little bag of fortune cookie fortunes. I have no idea why I was saving them and I it reminds me of how much Chinese food that I had eaten, um, which is good and bad, right? Uh, but yes, yeah, so I found all these fortunes and I decided that I didn't want to throw them away or do anything with them. So I said, oh, you know what, maybe now's the time to make a little craft project. 
and I just put them inside my journal. You will have many friends when you need them. And this sticker was from Etsy. I ordered this actually a couple months ago. And I have another sticker coming, so I left this space open to put my name. And that is the extent of the creativity. <laughs> I didn't do any, I was hoping to do some sort of visual art thing, and I did not, but that's okay. Ah, I can't find my page again. There we go. So I've cleared the space mentally that artistic inspiration will come to me now that I'm not constantly occupied and distracted by by technology. Uh, so that is where we are. It is the week of August 11th through 17th. I'm so quiet now. I'm just focusing and concentrating because I don't want to mess anything up. It's so weird. Hi. This is my habit tracker for the week. Okay, it is later in the day. I had a little technical issue with my phone. Uh, so the video just basically cut off, I think, after I did the, the habit tracker. So I didn't get to show you the creation of this to-do list. But I'm exploring the idea of putting a future log possibly at the end of the journal, the last few pages. Um, I tend to shy away from any kind of like monthly spreads or anything that is outside of the weekly spread that I am expecting myself to go back and review because I tend to not do that. And then it's just wasted energy, wasted space. So, um, but I think a future log might work for me versus trying to do something where I have to flip backward in the journal. So we'll see. Do you have a future log in your journal and how do you set it up? And has it worked out for you? Let me know in the comments. This is something that I'm definitely interested in trying. We'll see. And now it's time to put some, put the month. All right. Now I will do a space for my weekly tasks. This is more of just a list really at this point. I'm not checking things off or anything. Okay, yes, I did find some correction tape. It's just, it, <laughs> the little ribbon thingy is broken. So I have to sit there and like, kind of pull this in taut <laughs> and do it that way. Um, so the things we do to try to keep our journal looking a certain way. These are my weekly tasks. For some reason, I just wanted to put the day of the week in really big, bold letters. And this section, I totally messed up with the tape, but that's okay. Uh, so yeah, it's mostly YouTube related stuff. And then down here, I am, since I've been trying to eat better, I want to start to do some kind of meal prep. So that way during the week, I can just throw things in a bowl. Like if I'm making a salad, I wanna have all the different things I wanna put on it, have everything ready to go and then just dump it in a bowl, eat it, good to go. Um, so that is something that I'm working on, at least having like my starches and stuff cooked uh, for the week. That would be wonderful. That would save so much time and so much mental <laughs> anguish trying to think of what to eat. And now I'm gonna come down and do my goals for this quarter. It's time for my intention of the week. Okay, here we are. I intend to do everything I can to make future Alicia happier, more relaxed, and more focused. Is there something I can do ahead of time so that she doesn't have to? Is there something special I can do to make her smile? I intend to seek those tasks out. Hmm. Yeah. 
yeah, <laughs> sadly, it does help to think of future Alicia as a separate person because she is, right? Like, she's not, I'm not future Alicia. I'm not, we don't have the same mindset. We don't have the same priorities. You know, we don't have the same lives, uh, or at least I hope we won't. Um, so, yeah, it does help to think of future Alicia as a, an entirely separate being, or maybe a romantic partner. That's weird to say, but yeah, just someone that I want to do nice things for and make sure that that person is well taken care of, well well regarded, and that they are not stressed out unnecessarily. So yeah, it, it does kind of help if, if you're struggling to think of that. Yeah, maybe just think of your future self as an entirely separate person who happens to be very much like you, only hopefully somewhat better <laughs> in some way. This is my weekly spread, and I thank you always so much for joining me as I plan for the week. I hope this was helpful to help you get started on your week. Please leave me a comment down below. What what are some things that you are working on toward your future self? What are maybe if you want to include something in your letter to your future self, even though I didn't really include, I didn't tell you what's on mine. You know, let me know your thoughts about your future self. And please subscribe and like this video if you liked it. And I'm going to give you the upside down wave. Goodbye. <laughs> Have a good week. Now I shall read to you my letter to the future to future Alicia of 2028. Dear future Alicia,